So let's talk a little bit about management, management of the disease surgically specifically. So this is, you know, a, a totally separate issue, but we think it's important to talk about is, uh, you know, what's going on with you? I mean, what's going on when you go to the emergency room, um, whether it's your first cystine stone or you don't know you have cystinuria or you're diagnosed and you have, you're having another episode that's causing tons of pain that's forcing you to go into the emergency room. When you get to the emergency room, chances are, and it's not all the time, but the chances are you're meeting an ER doctor that you may have never met before, or even if you have, it's not someone, excuse me, it's not someone that sees you on a routine basis. So the long and short of that is that they don't really know you that well, even if they can see your history in the computer, they still have a problem in front of them. And ER doctors are trained to deal with the problem there in front of them and decide, is this an emergency that needs a procedure or a surgery right now? Is there something that I need to do right now to save this person's life? Or do I need to call another doctor in to figure out what to do here in, you know, the next five minutes, 10 minutes, two hours, whatever it might be. And so when that ER doctor sees you, regardless of what you might be telling them, they need to say, all right, I'm comfortable with the diagnosis I've made here. And most of the time, especially now in the world of medicine where people are really covering themselves or they're scared or they want to make sure they don't miss a diagnosis because who knows what could happen, they're going to get a CT scan. And, uh, and unfortunately for you guys, you know, you probably have had quite a few before. And it's not the best because you continue to get radiation exposure and eventually it could, could cause cancers if you get enough radiation exposure. So a good thing to do when you go to the emergency room is, and we've talked about this before, but we do have some resources. We're happy to help you through the hub. We have cards that we can give you that say, hey, I have cystinuria. This is what cystinuria is. If you're a member of the International Cystinuria Foundation or the International Cystinuria Foundation Facebook page, Dr. David Goldfarb, who's really the cystinuria guru of the world, uh, who's, who works out of NYU, He's written a letter that you can download there that says, I have cystinuria. This is what cystinuria is. This is why I'm saying what I'm saying. These resources are out there to help you so that that doctor can maybe get more um, comfortable with what you're telling them. Hey, I, I think I'm having a stone. I need X, Y, and Z pain medication. I need fluids or I need this or that, and I'll be fine. This has worked for me in the past. Um, but ultimately, they may not know you, and so they're going to wonder what to do. Uh, so, you know, and, they, and then pain medication is a big problem. They don't need, they need to believe that you actually do have a stone, even though you know you have it and you know that it's causing the pain, they may not believe it. And, uh, and they worry about giving out pain medications in, in light of the new environment too of, of medicine, how pain medications have been, uh, you know, been a problem and doctors are more scared to write pain medications. So you have all that going against you, which is terrible, uh, especially considering you have a real problem going on if you have a stone that's blocking the tube between the kidney and the bladder and causing the pain. And so, you know, what can you do? Well, we have those, those resources, and, and those can be great. Another thing to do is, you know, if you think you have a stone, and we call it an obstructing stone, that's the medical term, an obstructing stone, one that's causing a backup and then uh, causing you all this pain in this short period of time. Uh, another good thing to do is when you get to the emergency room, either you or the person, uh, someone's with you can say, hey, I think I have an, a stone. Can I get and see if your hospital has it, a low-dose stone protocol? And what that really is is it's just a very low-dose radiation that they use through the CT scanner to see if they can see the kidney stone. It doesn't always work, but it is a good, pretty good way to get a stone without exposing you to all the radiation that a CT scan would give you. So it's something to ask for. So do you really need another CT scan? Maybe, maybe not, probably not. Um, but whether you do or you don't, there are potentially some other options, and a low-dose CT scan protocol is, is another and our low-dose stone protocol is a good one. Um, let's see. I'm seeing some questions come in. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry. just um, Someone is saying a great thing to do is keep your medical records on, um, on a flash drive. It's a good idea so they can read through them. Another good thing to do is if you go to the same hospital, you know, see if your, your urologist would be willing to take your calls or find a way that you could communicate with them so that they can call ahead and let the ER know that you're coming. That will certainly help smooth the process over, and it's a great thing to do if you can get that relationship um, with your urologist. So, and, and, and this uh, patient here read my, my mind that if you go into the emergency room and you have a lot of pain, Toradol or Ketorolac is the, uh, the, the, the generic, uh, the non-branded name of it, uh, is a great drug that works 
works or tends to work very well for kidney stone pain, which is non-narcotic. It's not a morphine or a Dilaudid or any of those other pain medications. So if you ask for Toradol, they may be less worried about you trying to get pain medication and more inclined to think about your problem. It's just something to think about. But the problem with Toradol is that some, you, you know, cystic area patients do tend to have some kidney function issues. And uh, if you give a lot of Toradol, it can cause kidney function issues. So you have to be careful with that, but it is something to keep in, in, in mind. Um, <clears throat> okay. So people are talking about levels and things. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so what's going on? You're in the emergency room now. All right. We talked about what's going to be happening maybe in the mind of the ER doctor and, uh, and some things to think about communicating with them. Do you need surgery? Um, maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Uh, the... The reality is that there's a couple of reasons to have surgery or to have a nephrostomy tube put in. And we we talked to, uh, we haven't talked about nephrostomy tubes, but uh, and I'm sure many of you know what they are. But it's instead of having surgery where they you know go into your bladder and and potentially put a stent up or look up into the ur the tube between the kidney and the bladder, the ureter, um, you can get a tube directly into your kidney and and not have that procedure done. You'd have a nephrostomy done. Um, really, what's going on is the question is. Do you have a fever or does there, is there evidence of bacteria in your urine? If you have fever or you seem really sick or you have bacteria in your urine, that's an emergency because that bacteria can find its way up into the bloodstream through the kidney, and then you can have a real problem on your hands. And, and uh, so that needs to be managed immediately. Um, do you have one kidney? If you only have one remaining functioning kidney or only one kidney that you were born with and you have cystinaria, uh, that's an emergency. You have to find a way to get that urine to pass. Otherwise, it can block the kidney and you can go into kidney failure. So uh, it's whether you have one kidney or how well your kidneys work is a matter of whether you need to do surgery right then and there. And so the nephrostomy tube is really just a quick way that what we call decompress the kidney, get the urine out of there, potentially get bacteria out of there without taking the time to get you under anesthesia potentially and get you into the operating room and doing all that. So sometimes that could be a, an alternate option. And uh, and pain. I mean, how bad is your pain? How well can you tolerate pain? Some patients are in such pain and cannot get that pain under control in the emergency room that the only way to deal with it is go to the operating room and put it in a stent. Um, and I can speak to you guys and say these words because most of you know what that means. And some other patients say, why would I want a stent? But, um, you know, everybody's a little bit different. So. So really, you know, those are the major considerations for why you'd need a surgery right, right away. And being admitted to the hospital, they may admit you and try to control your pain before they would take you to surgery, depends if the urologist is available or home or whatever it might be. So, so those are the big considerations you need to be thinking about. But for you guys, it's good to know that and take it home. Say, all right, well, if I don't have a fever or bacteria, if I eat my kidneys, I have two kidneys, and my pain's okay, I probably don't need surgery now.